consultation as well as presentation for you guys to do a little um, uh, information gathering on some fast to tattoo removal. Uh, but unfortunately, these tattoos can be a permanent reminder of a temporary feeling. Um, if you have any, of course, questions for me or locate a doc, um, please just call the uh, 800 number listed there, and we'll be more than happy to um, get you guys uh, squared away. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So uh, let's talk about the uh, different ways that we can actually remove a tattoo. Uh, and these are some tried and true methods, um, the first of which is dermabrasion. A little bit more than just your regular microdermabrasion. This is where we're getting down to the uh, stratum, uh, past the stratum corneum, uh, into those mid-level uh, layers of the uh, skin. Um, this will allow us to, of course, take that superficial ink off of there, as you can see in that first picture, all the way down to the bottom left. And then, of course, there's chemical peels. By uh, giving uh, the uh, skin a, if you will, a um, calculated damage to the superficial layers using a TCA peel or a phenol peel, it allows once again the body to help break up some of those ink pigments to once again allow um, the body's natural resources to absorb uh, the uh, ink pigment. Salabrasion is using a high strength um, saline uh, and a very concentrated um, a solution to once again provide a uh, chemical um, abrasion of the tattoo superficial layer itself. Crowd surgery can also be used by once again freezing the top skin, allowing the skin to turn over, and then once again when in doubt we can always excise the lesion, especially if it's a very large tattoo that needs to be um, removed fairly quickly. We may do it in serial excisions, especially those on the arm. We'll make an incision lengthwise remove an ellipse, put it back together, come back in maybe six to eight weeks as the uh, skin allows itself to kind of expand and stretch, and then once again finishing up. So once again, a great, great um, way to remove some of those uh, lasers that are a little bit um, harder to reach or need to uh, uh, remove very quickly. And that last but not least, the magic wand that everybody likes to think about is the laser, and we're going to go into more of that uh, during uh, this um, session. So first of all, let's talk about why a tattoo is uh, permanent. Um, there are thousands of pigmented particles that are suspended essentially in the dermis of the skin. The epidermal layer, which is much the superficial layer, the pigmented layer or a superficial epidermal freckle, those of course will be taken off very, very easily by the laser. However, one, those that are actually deeper in the uh, dermis and are a little bit larger, the body's unable um, to phagocytize or remove uh, those um, uh, pigment all by itself. And so I want you to think of the laser. Um, it's actually is acute. It'll penetrate. And what we're trying to do is break up those larger fragments of ink into smaller ones and then ultimately be removed by the normal skin process. So here's a quick slide. Um, we like to use the term selective photothermolysis. Selective because it's discriminate, because you have to have a certain wavelength to get a certain tattoo color treated. We're using photo or light energy. We will also use the heat of the laser once it's absorbed by the uh, pigment and then of course lysis of damage the, uh, 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 the uh, pigment particles and therefore allowing uh, the larger pigment particles to become smaller ones. And this uh, particular physiology is also used by our laser hair removal by using uh, laser energy to absorb the uh, pigment uh, in the uh, hair shaft. Now along with selective photothermolysis, we know that tattoos can come in many colors. The easiest one to treat, of course, is the darker pigment uh, one. And essentially when we start to have in the other ones with the greens and then the yellows, we need a specific wavelength so it will target that particular uh, color. We also need to make sure that the laser has enough energy to penetrate deeply into the dermis and not be stopped by the uh, energy and is dissipated in the epidermal laser layer of the skin and just doesn't get down uh, to that particular layer. Now once the energy is absorbed by the tattoo pigment, we want to make sure that once again it's just absorbed by the tattoo pigment and it leaves the pigment in the surrounding skin. 
and we want to have those short bursts of energy uh, to be delivered to that uh, pigment so it um, uh, maximizes fragmentation and minimizes damaging to the skin by the skin absorbing that energy. Down in the uh, top, uh, on the top picture there, you can see one of the lasers um, and how the uh, tattoo is itself is absorbing the energy, causing a little bit of steam formation underneath the skin, which essentially um, goes away after several minutes with just icing. And as you can think of the um, picture below it, where you see the picture uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, the first one being the larger particles, and then after the laser um, breaking up into the smaller particles. Now, you want to make sure, once again, in selective thermolysis, think of it, you know, once again, as a specialized jackhammer. We're going to make big rocks into little rocks. So we need the laser um, that we'll use for the yellow ink, and we need the green laser, and, of course, the blue laser for the blue ink. Um, the tattoos that seem to do better, of course, are the black and the red um, tattoos. Now, one thing that myself and uh, most of my patients really appreciate is our pain management. Um, that we do um, in our facility um, at, um, and essentially we use different methods. One of them is just a topical ice. Uh, sometimes we'll use a combination of topical anesthesia, especially for those individuals um, that are very sensitive or using in very sensitive areas. Um, and we may start that process a half an hour to 45 minutes before the treatment. Or as we like to do is to actually have the prescription sent home with the patient so that they can um, have it on before they come to see us for the actual treatment. And this has actually been a game changer, which is the local anesthesia. And by just using some ice, some local anesthesia, um, it allows um, those uh, tattoos um, after treating for about 10 minutes to be aggressively treated by the laser, minimizing heat, minimizing uh, pain, and as well as minimizing damage to the surrounding structure. But of course, the uh, doctor or a certified um, practitioner um, like a nurse needs to be um, um, needs to do those injections, and of course, um, all of those things are regulated by the different laws in the particular states. So, one of the questions we always have: Well, well, doc, how long is it going to take me? Um, most of these steps are quoting one to six sessions, and sometimes even longer. Um, at our facility, we really make it very aggressive, and once again, the pain management allows us to do that. Uh, we let them know that, hey, there's going to be a little road rash. Hey, there's going to be a little bit of blistering. Um, but being aggressive and to have it done in two to three sessions uh, really makes it cost effective and very uh, happy for the client. Usually we will do the treatments in four to eight week um, uh, sessions. And once again, as you see um, in our um, photo in the bottom, how it lightens uh, over uh, time. And once again, with each session, there's less energy that is absorbed, less um, pain management that, needs, that is needed. And once again, uh, we always will tell the patient to use their sunblock. So, so you can, of course, tell this is a very happy patient. Now, what are some of the side effects? Well, we can always have partial removal, essentially, if the patient only gets one or two treatments. Um, uh, we're always worried about uh, changes in skin color, especially for those individuals who um, what we call a Fitzpatrick 3 or 4 or even higher. Uh, we have to worry about hyperpigmentation, hypopigmentation, depending on the time of the year. And, of course, a good history um, from the patient will allow uh, us to make some recommendations to minimize those issues. Scar formation is usually very, very unlikely, and it's very, very minimal even in my practice. Um, it usually has to do for those individuals who may have a little hypertrophic scarring, uh, usually with a treatment of a little mederma, uh, and sometimes a little hydrocortisone or even just an injection of a kenalog uh, can minimize um, the scar formation. It's usually you know, noticed very, very early. So one, that's a quick um, a segment on to, uh, for our patients. Uh, for more information for laser tattoo removal. Uh, I'll be more than happy to take any calls that you guys uh, have at the number listed below. I want to thank Located Doc for allowing me to uh, give this presentation um, uh, to our Located Doc uh, clients and patients, and we look forward to seeing you at the next one soon. Thank you, and have a great day.